Hey guys, welcome back to an emotion. In this episode today, I'm gonna show you the basic of keyframes and graph editor. So previously I've been doing more specific technique in After Effects, so I thought it would be good for me to create a content where I show you the basic, in this case, is the keyframe. gonna start with animating the position of my object so create keyframe there I'm gonna go to two seconds and I'm just gonna move this object across the screen and basically what we did there we created linear keyframes and what linear keyframe is basically it moves your object in a consistent speed so if you zoom in in here those dots are basically the in-between frames that's automatically created when you create two keyframes like this so if we go frame by frame and as you can see that the gap between the dots are all equal now if you select all of the keyframes and go to the graph editor so there's two types of editors there's speed graph and there's value graph this is the speed graph Speed graph basically shows the speed of your keyframes. And in this case, because it's linear, it's consistent throughout. So it's just straight line like that. Now, if we click on this button and then go to edit value graph, usually value graph will have this colored lines. And in this case, there's the red line, which is the X position. Green line is the Y position. We didn't really move the object in a Y axis. So the Y line is just straight. But for example, if we move it up here, the Y line started to change. Just gonna undo that and just focus on the red line, which is the X axis. Now what this means is basically, this is where your object starts on this X value, which is 388. As we scroll our playhead, the value of the X position also increases. So basically it means that it starts from 388 and then it goes up to 1500. Now we have these two icons here. This one basically, if we click on this, it will just zoom into the keyframes that we selected and we can zoom it out here again. So if we select this keyframes and then click on that icon again, fit selection to view, it'll zoom in on those keyframes. We can also select all of the keyframes and then click on this again to show the whole keyframes. And I'll zoom it out again. And the icon next to it is basically, it's going to show all of the keyframes that's available on the position. So without even having to select the keyframes, if we just click on this button, it'll just zoom in to those areas. All right, now I'm going to go back to the main com by clicking the graph editor again. I'm going to select the keyframes and I'm going to show you the easy ease. So click on F9 to create easy ease keyframes. And what easy ease is, it makes your object ease in and ease out. So what that means that when the object starting to move, it started slowly and then it ramps up in the middle and then it slows down again at the end. I'm going to show you real quick. See how it start slowly and then it's kind of like speeds up a little bit in the middle and then it slows down at the end. So in comparison, if we change it back to linear keyframe by holding control and click on your keyframe. So the speed of linear keyframe is all consistent. Whereas if we change that to easy ease again by hitting F9, it just kind of adds that slow start and slow ends. Now if we select this is the easy keyframe and go to graph editor. We'll see that the value graph changes. It just basically means that the X value increases slowly and then it speeds up in the middle and then it kind of like slows down again. Now let's see the speed graph. So this is the speed. So basically it means the speed starts at zero and it ramps up and it ends slowly again. 
Now, I usually like to play with speed graph more than value graph because I just like to edit the speed of the movement itself. My favorite way to edit this easy ease speed graph is usually I would bring both of the handles all the way to the left, like so. And I'll show you how it, this looks like. So basically, the speed is really fast at the start and it slows down at the end. So you see the spike on the graph, that basically means that the speed starts really fast here. And then it just kind of like slows down at the end. And if we zoom in to look at the in-between frames again, there's less in-between at the start and there's way more at the end. So if we look at it frame by frame, there's actually only like one, two, three, four in between frames at the start, but then as we go towards the end, there's more frames created, and that just means that it slows down. Now, you can always edit this speed graph the way you like it. Like, for example, if we select this again, and I'm gonna hit F9, and maybe we wanna start the object to start slowly and then ends really fast. See how that looks. Or maybe we want to just select the end keyframe and then hit F9 so that it creates this slows down at the end. It starts really slow and then ramps up towards the end, but then it slows right down at the end. Or maybe we can even like drag this handle all the way to the middle and just kind of like create this spike in the middle, which means that it's going to speed up only in the middle. Now let's go back to the main comp. I'm gonna select both of the keyframes, hold control and click on the keyframes to turn it back to linear keyframe. Now I'm gonna show you keyframe interpolation. Now I'm gonna create another keyframe in the middle and just kind of like move my object upwards. As soon as we do that, we created this handle which is called Bezier handle. Now, Bezier handle basically is a handle that lets you adjust your path, which is this. This is your path. So basically, you can change your path however you want it. Like, for example, you want to start doing that kind of like wave movement. Now, if we select all of the keyframes, right click, and then I want to show you keyframe interpolation. So there's temporal interpolation. Temporal interpolation is basically your keyframes and it's set as linear, as you can see. And then there's spatial interpolation. Now, spatial interpolation is what affects the shape of your path. Now, it's set as continuous Bezier. You can set it to linear, which basically get rid of the Bezier handles and just create this rigid path. And you can change it to Bezier which creates those Bezier handle again, but this time you can adjust the handles individually without affecting the other handles that's connected to it. Or you can change it to continuous Bezier. And if you set it to continuous Bezier or auto Bezier, the handles that are connected is affecting each other. This is exactly the same with auto Bezier. Now let's go to the temporal interpolation. So if we change it to Bezier, Continuous Bezier or Auto Bezier, it basically creates this Easy Ease keyframes. But the problem is when you go to Graph Editor, it doesn't really change the shape of your Graph Editor. It does give you the Bezier handles there, but then when you play it, it doesn't have that Easy Ease effect. So usually I would just hit F9 to create that kind of easing effect if you want to. The last one that I want to show you is hold frame. So hold frame is basically just holding that exact frame where your keyframe is. So for this instance, there's only three keyframes. So it only created three hold frames basically. And there's no in between. As you can see here, if you click on your object, there's no dots that we usually see, for example, if we see it with linear, you can see the dots there, but 
with hold frames, there is no in-between keyframes. So I'm just going to select these keyframes again and hit F9 to easy ease it. And the last thing I want to show you is separate dimension. So if you select your position here, right click and then separate dimension, it's just going to separate between your X and Y position. This also works on rotation. It will separate the X rotation and Y rotation. So if we select both of them and then go to graph editor. Now this is your speed graph. It does create this like weird shape in a speed graph, but if you go to value graph, it just shows you that you can actually adjust this graph individually by using the Bezier handle. And this usually is really helpful to me when I animate camera because usually animating camera is really tricky and I just like to separate the dimension. Now, if we go to speed graph, I would usually just start with easy easing it again so that it's nice and clean. Now, as you can see that even though it's easing in, the shape of the path is very rigid. That is because you separate your dimension. So if you go to keyframe interpolation, so you can see you can't change the spatial interpolation when you separate your dimension. That's another downside of separating dimension, but you can adjust it using your value graph basically. So for example, if we want to change the shape of the middle keyframe, so we can do that. But then again, I personally don't really like editing the value graph, but it does work in some instances. So if at the end of the day, you decide that you don't want to separate your dimension, you can undo that by clicking both of the position and then right click and then just turn off the separate dimension. And it just sends back to the normal position keyframes. That's it for today for basic keyframes and graph editor. I hope that could be helpful to some of you out there. And thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow my Instagram because I'm doing this challenge every Friday where if you tag your work with hash high animation, I might repost it on Friday. Thanks for watching guys.